something that came up in the comments of my last tutorial video asked about editing the pieces of text that appear at the end of episodes in Doom games such as this one from the end of episode 1 of Heretic. This actually opens up a path to talking about some other interesting Doom modding avenues that are a bit different from what I've described so far, because editing the text here isn't actually possible with standard vanilla WAD editing. However, there are a couple of ways that the community has worked around it. In previous videos I've said that the WAD contains all the assets that a Doom Engine game needs to run, and that's almost true, but there are some things that you can't reach with a custom WAD. We've seen that you can replace the sounds, the sprites, the maps and so on by patching over parts of the iWAD, but there's also some promising configuration that actually lives among compiled code inside the Doom executable. A lot of the time, the stuff in the XE is fairly deep, and there are things that Carmack and company decided it wasn't worth making available externally. For example, the number of hit points each monster has, and the amount of damage that their attacks do, are stored in tables buried somewhere in the executable. But there are also some things that you would arguably expect to find in the wads instead. The names of levels and the end of episode text that we're interested in are also in there, stored in a big table of strings. The early Doom modders wanted to get at these as well, and they came up with Dehacked, which is a different kind of editor that focused not on the stuff that you could change in wads, but on modifying the actual Doom executable. What I'm showing now is a branch of Dehacked that was aimed specifically at Heretic, called HHE for Heretic Hack Editor. It allows you to browse through a list of items, weapons, and other things that it exposes, and fiddle with any of the values, buttons, and switches to change how the game behaves. You can then save this new configuration as a DEH file. Here I've altered the text for the end of episode screen that we just saw, changing it from the default story to my own message. It's worth mentioning in this case that the text never wraps on its own and you have to insert your own line breaks in it. Once you've saved your changes to a DEH file, you tell Dehacked to apply that file onto your executable. Dehacked knows the locations of the bytes in the game's exe that control the values that it allows you to mess with, so it creates a copy of the exe, applies its changes, and then writes its own doctored exe file that you then use to run the game instead of the standard one. So if I run this new exe and cheat to get to the end of the boss level of the first episode of Heretic, the story on the post-episode screen will change to the one that I wrote, stored in the modified exe. You can, of course, combine loading custom wads onto this new exe, so given enough expertise with Dehacked, you can have a set of new levels in your wad, which are given new names by Dehacked, new monsters which have had their graphics defined in the wad and their hit points and attacks defined via Dehacked, and so on. These days there is also a UI-based tool for creating dehacked patch files called Whacked4, but it doesn't have an option to perform the actual patch. To apply the DEH file to a vanilla Doom exe, you'll still need to use the original dehacked tool. The reason Whacked didn't bother implementing the option to perform the patch itself is that modern source ports work with dehacked files a little differently to avoid the hassle of having to prepare a hacked executable. Chocolate Doom, for example, adds another command line argument DEH, which wasn't in vanilla, so that you can tell it what dehacked file to load. The changes are applied in memory when the game is started up instead of saved to a different exe. Alternatively, some ports will look for a dehacked lump embedded in the wad, and will load that automatically when the wad is invoked without having to be told to load it separately. That's the traditional way of messing with things buried in Doom's code, but some ports that are focused on enhancing the engine open up a lot more possibilities. Like Chocolate Doom, GZ Doom provides the DEH parameter so that you can load patches on the fly, but it also makes some changes that make dehacked patches unnecessary. GZ Doom hugely extends the number of things that are customizable about Doom Engine games, and it does this by adding a third layer between the executable and the iWOD. When it started up, GZ Doom gets the basic configurations of its monsters, weapons, and text, and so on, not directly from its own exe, but from several external PK3 packages of its own. These contain all the definitions for the game objects and episodes in all the Doom, Heretic, Chex, Quest, and Strife games, and it decides which of them to load up based on the iWOD that's being plugged into it. PK3s are packages of files that work very much like a WOD, and they contain a collection of lumps that can be overridden by lumps in a custom WOD that gets plugged in further along the chain. Therefore, with this arrangement, we can extend or replace text lumps in exactly the same way as how we made a WOD that overrode one of the iWOD levels on the previous video. In this case, the lump we're interested in is called language, and it lives in zdextra.pk3. This is a very large data lump that contains all the strings for all the common iWODs and their translations into all the languages that GZDoom currently supports. 
Each string can be looked up with a keyword. When GZ Doom is told to display a string associated with a keyword, it looks it up in the language lump and displays whatever translation the game is being played in. If we search for a bit of the text in Heretic's end screen, we can identify that this string is stored under the keyword HE1Text. So if we're targeting GZ Doom, we don't need to get into the weeds of dehacked at all, and we can fall back to using a WAD editor like Slade to override that message. We need to add a lump to our own WAD called Language and define our own copy of HE1 text. Unlike the other lumps we've seen so far, GZ Doom understands that additional language lumps are to be added to its existing one and won't overwrite the entire thing like it would if it encountered a sprite or a map in the PWAD with the same name as one in the IWAD. The syntax for language lumps is documented in the ZDoom wiki, which is also a great resource for learning everything else that ZDoom can do. We first define that this section is for the language code ENU, which indicates the language spoken in America that approximates English, and we also set it as the default text that will be used if no specific translation of the text is found. Then we specify we're writing text to go into HE1Text, and just like we did for dehacked, we write our own end text to replace the existing one. If we want to support more languages, we can also add them here alongside the default one. With that saved into a WAD, we can load it up in the game, run to the end, hit the switch, and we'll have our own changed story in the game. Again, only modern extended source ports recognise the language lump in WADs, and the original Doom executables won't think to look for it because all their strings are built right into their exe. The language lump is just one of a very large number of extra definitions that GZ Doom provides to WAD authors. Along with the ending text, you might want to change the names of the maps in an episode, or how many maps are even in the episode. If you're redefining all of these things at once, it's easier to define it all in the lump called Map Info, which I'll cover in a later video. In the meantime, those are Dehacked and the Language Lump, which are a classic and a modern way of altering text in Doom games.